The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, joined this morning by our man Basil Chapman, filling in for Tom. Basil, good morning. Good morning to you. How are you? I'm doing great, man. We got quite a market to start off Wednesday trading. So we have Chairman Powell speaking right now before the uh, House Financial Services Committee. His remarks becoming public about an hour and a half ago. You have the markets liking the fact that it seems like he is hinting at a rate cut coming down the line in July. You have the Dow up 163 right now, trading 26,946. S&Ps above 3,000 for the first time. We get the cash actually under that level right now, 29.97. NASDAQ up 75 points at 82.16 and quite a market. Gold trading higher up to about 14.10 right now this morning. We have the yield on the 10-year pulling back a bit had reached 2.1%, sitting right now between about 2.06 and 2.07. With all that going on, let's start it off. We'll jump over to our man Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade Thinkorswim. Right after this program, every day, fast market. They break down what's going on across all these markets. And, man, I think they'll have something to talk about today. Kevin Hinks, good morning. I'm here, Brian Basil Chapman. Thanks for having me on. How are you guys doing? We're doing well. You wanted two hours yesterday. What do you want today? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Think about this. All you needed to do to understand at 7.30 if Jerome Powell's statements were good for the market or poor for the market, look at the one-minute chart on just about everything right. that came out right. at 7.30. E-minis just jumped. Everything just, you know, the dollar sold off, gold jumped. Uh, bonds, which were down pretty substantially in the third year bond, rallied pretty hard, 10 year rallied hard. Uh, so he pretty much set the tone. But I just want everyone to be uh, understand everything looks really good right now. And he's pretty much locked in, even with a CPI number that's coming out Thursday, he's pretty much locked in a quarter point rate cut for July 31st. That being said, you know, the expectations for CPI aren't very hot coming on, on Thursday. It's unchanged with a 1.6 year-over-year number. So it looks like he's setting us up for a quarter-point rate cut. And not only Jerome Powell, guys, not only the comments he's about to make, he's going on, like you said, Tommy, live right now. Raphael Bostic talked last night about letting the economy actually run hotter than 2%. Esther George came in and said, inflation unlikely to surge anytime soon. So that, and with the prepared comments that Jerome Powell uh, l released at 7.30 this morning, it's, it's all systems go here. I mean, it goes so far, Kevin, right? You have Morgan Stanley out there saying that they're going to go for a 50 basis cut, which is pretty yeah. remarkable. Um, maybe I, swinging for the fences a bit on their prediction there. but as in, I don't know why they, they would say that. They're, Joel Powell and James Bullard both came out last week. I agree. Or was 10 days ago almost now and said that's to take that off the table, and I believe that's accurate. I believe I the payroll the number took that off the table. Go ahead, Basil. I was just going to say, that's not their style in any case. They they like to make measured moves. Well, that's I not agree with that completely. Yeah, it's outside of that one. We'll say, but I mean, it's remarkable. And the only conversation I think is 25 or 50, and so I guess they just said, why not? We'll go with 50 you know, since nobody else I will. Hate to, I hate to break something like this down to the real most simple way, most common denominator, but look at the Fed Fund's futures. They didn't have a June hike. They don't have a half point uh, basis cut in them now. Definitely. Go where the money's bet. You right. want to check where the real interest rates are trading and the and and the Fed funds futures. Go go to the forward slash ZQ and just watch that. When that moves, that's where the money's bet. That'll tell you what's happening. And it only got up to about twenty percent chance of a. Uh, quarter point rate cut in June never was a, a reality. I think July is pretty much all Jerome Powell has to do is go by that. And that'll guide him the way that the market's expecting him to go. I think it's very basic and fundamental way to look at it. 
Yeah, it's pretty remarkable. I mean, the reaction, just like you said, across the board. I mean, you had gold sitting down there at 1395. Yeah. Bam, within the span of the, those one-minute charts, um, 1410 in a heartbeat. Um, and rates pulling back. I was surprised to see. I was up early this morning. The 10-year had crept all the way back up to 2.1. Um, right. And then that pulled back as well. So I guess we'll see what happens. It'll be interesting because the remarks come out, but he's going to take questions and answers as well. So it'll be interesting to see if anything gets said there, um, that he does make some headlines sometimes, as you were saying last uh, yesterday, Kevin. He does. He does. Of, Go ahead, Bill. I, I was just going to say, there could be a bit of a short-term dichotomy here because the TBT looks like it wants to rally. The bonds, as far as I'm concerned, have made at least a, a short-term top here. So um, you might also get that a little inflection, and we'll see what happens. Also, I think that the market might be bumping into some resistance levels here. So we'll see. This is an important week. I There's think. no levels I above. I agree with that completely, Basil. Because remember, there, there, there's a saying in the trading community from pit traders called a blow-off top, right? Where all the news comes out, everyone consumes and digests it, and says, remember. 2% on the 10 year is going to be a busy price. 3,000 on the on the on the on the S&P 500 should be a busy price. Sure. That doesn't mean it won't go a little above there, but you're going to run into some selling up here, some people uh, lightening their load. This market is pretty high and, you know, I I I agree completely with the theory that you got to be careful up here in terms of failed rallies. Yeah, I was just going to joke that there's no levels above 3,000 in the S&P. We're in new territory, man, as right. of uh, intraday at least and in, in hitting that high. Um, what else do we have going on today, Kevin? I know I was looking at Tesla's getting a pop today, of course, with them releasing um, kind of an internal memo, memo about new more cars coming down the line. Yeah. What else? Um, today, we're going to cover a lot of the uh, you know immediate things that are trading, but actually, we get to finally start to talk about some earnings. It's coming, We've man. Got yeah. earnings. We've got uh, Bed Bath & Beyond after the bell, that if you remember a quarter ago, they had a big move after earnings. And then D Delta Airlines is coming out tomorrow morning. Uh, that's another good one. So we're going to cover, we actually, uh, ahead of the 15th, 16th, and 17th, when the banks start coming out, and that's when earnings really start to kick in. We've got a couple good ones trickling out now that we're going to deal with. Nice. Nice. And those, and we have uh, Amazon Prime Day coming down the line, yeah. 15th and 16th as well. Amazon, quite a run yesterday, man. Well, tomorrow, remember, every Friday on the show, I don't talk to you guys on Friday, but every Friday our show is Fang Plus Friday. So we'll cover Amazon and Apple probably this coming Friday for sure. A lot of news on Apple this week, so it'll justify some good coverage on Friday. Amazon could be up $100 from your last Friday session, Kevin, when you guys were talking. <laughs> I mean, that's it's, it's, it's sitting at 2009, right? Right now, um, pretty remarkable the run it's at. Well, we look forward to the program, folks. 45 minutes from right here, Fast Market. Kevin Hanks, the team, Think or Swim. And if you haven't checked it out, go download the TD Ameritrade Network app. You can check them out anytime. Kevin, we look forward to the show in uh, 45 minutes. Basil, Tommy, great talking to you guys. You as well, man. Take care. Thank you, Kevin. Folks, stay tuned. Basil and I are going to be coming right back. Like Kevin said, like we were talking about, you have Jerome Powell. He is speaking right now to the House Financial Services Committee. We'll see if we get any headlines from that. We also have crude oil inventories coming up at 1030. We'll take a look at those markets ahead of that number. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at tfnn.com. Sign up now for only $197 a month with the risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of tfnn.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. I'm Tommy O'Brien, joined by Basil Chapman this morning. We got markets in positive territory. Dow Jones up 150 right now. You have S&Ps positive by 17, NASDAQ positive by 64. Basil, I just wanted to read through some of the quotes uh, from Chairman Powell's remarks this morning, just to kind of give sure. some context about what, was, what the market really is interpreting. So we have inflation has been running below the FOMC symmetric 2% objective and cross currents such as trade tensions and concerns about Grow, global growth have been weighing on economic activity and the outlook, he said, uh, reiterating the central bank will act as appropriate. So he gets down, there's a risk that weak inflation will be even more persistent than we currently anticipate, Powell added, furthering the bolster, um, further bolstering the case for a rate cut. Overall growth in the second quarter appears to have moderated. Uh, many FOMC participants saw the case for a somewhat more accommodative monetary policy has strengthened. And um, to get down, though, to, to give some of the, the good he had in there in terms of Powell noted the economy performed reasonably well in the first half of 2019. I don't know if you'd be saying that if you were, you were about to cut rates by, you know, half a, half a point um, coming into the next meeting as in you know things are all right but we're a little bit worried about where we're going here and we're going to do what we need to do um and the market kind of took that and they ran with it and 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 that's where we find ourselves so this is a uh, very if we've got a moment yeah i yes. just want to show you something so on the left side chart this is uh based on the chapman methodology just let me quickly say what i look for is the most obvious low bar merely count each successively higher peak alphabetize them uppercase on the way up lowercase on the way down when you get to the fourth highest peak we label that peak d that's where other things can happen so look at this um we're right we're waiting in, uh, for subscribers we went long uh, june the third after being short from the um from the uh pre-april top so we went long and we still remain long we took a little bit off uh, the other day but what i am looking at is we've been waiting for this leg d to appear so that's exactly within the chapman wave methodology but look at this and you just made a very good point that uh, uh, going to new high means that you haven't got any overhead you don't know what right. the overhead resistance sure. is because there aren't levels of reference now 
What if you look at this little mini channel up here, I call it the Chapman Wave inside repellent zone. Look how many times it's gotten there and the price has been repelled. And, and I talk about cup formations. Look at the big cup and little cup like a um, cup and handle and now a little tiny cup. And this particular methodology says if after this move in leg D, if there isn't a stalling at this trend line resistance, it needs to be a big push, and that would be to 27,270, 27, okay. somewhere around there. That would just be a breakout, and then that would be just open territory to the upside. So we're at a very strong resistance. Wait a minute. The same thing happened now in the weekly chart. We've got this rising trend line. We've got left side, right side price time match. We've got a bunch of things saying that this leg E in the weekly chart, the MACD and stochastic are good. But this is where you need you need to see it break this resistance decisively. Oh, wait a minute. We've got the same thing in the rising trend line of the um, monthly chart. And we've had nine months from the January high of 2018 at 26,616 to the peak F top at 26,951 uh, in October. Very sharp pullback in, in December to 21,700. Now we're in, I'm calling this a leg C, but wait a minute, this is the ninth month and we're right in this resistance area. So that's why I think it's really important. Yeah. Uh, we're looking at, you spoke about gold, just, you know, the dollar had, yeah, once again, I'm talking about a peak D. What did we do? We just went to leg D yesterday, peak D pulling back, dollars in this middle of a big uh, um, range of uh, up and down between 98 and 90, 95. It's right in the middle of the range. And you've got gold kind of in the middle of the range, but it is up right now. I've got it up eight, pulling back from yeah. the intraday high. So I think that the, when we look at all these different key indexes, key sectors, I think we're in for a choppy period. I said that about two weeks ago. I was anticipating the second week of uh, July would be choppy. I think we're in for a choppy period. You don't have to break down. I just think there's a kind of a, a reorganizing of thoughts. And even if you look at, I mentioned this to uh, when we were talking to Kevin, look, yeah, peak D in the bonds, in the continuous contract of the 30-year Treasury bond continuous contract daily is a peak D and a potential leg F in the weekly. So I don't think it's all that cut and dried. I think this is just normal conditions you've got to be looking at. Don't listen to the words. Look at the prices. And the prices are saying, you know, we can have a little bit of a continuation of this, this kind of choppy sideways action and maybe other sectors can start to pick up where they were very weak. Maybe like an Amazon, like you were talking about. Oof. Amazon is doing very well, almost close yeah. to its all-time high. Qu quite That's a important. run, man, just even this week, let alone the run that's had and I keep referencing it as in I believe in years past you know they have quite a marketing opportunity like we we're talking about yesterday when they have these prime days to tout how big they are and the market usually reacts well when they announce that they're selling more echo devices than they've ever sold that they're selling is this, you know, a, is this a, a two day phenomenon it is a now? two day prime day somehow they turn that and I believe it's the wow. 15th and 16th I believe that's a Monday and a Tuesday and they run at midnight to midnight so that's uh, this coming Monday and Tuesday Tuesday. And yet Federal Express is way down and United Parcel Service, I don't understand it. Do they have a lot of their own independent drivers? Is that what it is? Uh, Amazon this is you're speaking of? Yes. I believe they are. I believe they're building out all those Mercedes little vans. I'm not sure yeah, if they have. Yeah, those are the white vans. Yeah, yeah, I mean, those are, like, I think those are contractors that they've um, but still, set up. But they're avoiding Yeah, the... so they, they, I believe they announced that program in the last couple of years, right? You can start a business. You can start a delivery business. We'll subsidize the beginning of it. Um, and I think that's kind of their way of building out their own infrastructure, of having, because you don't want to be relying on one company, two companies, because Amazon is the company. Perhaps Jeff Bezos has been one of the great innovators uh, of the 21st century. I mean, oh, his name... I, I would say for sure, yeah. because they are, they're everything. more than an internet company. I mean, they are a process company in terms of how they, they pioneered uh, fast delivery of internet items. When you think about that, you know, that's, that's how that game changed, getting an item in a day or two for no charge.
So we have oil coming up. I just want to take a quick look at the contract. Quite a run that we've had coming off of yesterday at $58. You get the August contract sitting at $59.44. I just wanted to take a peek at maybe some of the options that are available in here because now I don't know this. Whenever these contracts move so far, Basil and Nadex, they reset these contracts and we might be away from where um, these provide because realistically you'd want about $49.50 to be a contract that you'd have upward and downward exposure from where you're paying very little intrinsic value. The tens of guns. So. Well, are we looking, we're, we're looking at what, crude oil or what? Uh, yes, crude oil, the yes, August contract. Correct. We're sitting at 59.45. And correct, so yes. 59, so what did I say, 49, excuse me, 59.50 would be a price that would look for where you're right next to it. And we've just moved so much. So I, I had taken a peek at it. You know, you always have options in here that you'd be able to purchase. But realistically, these price points, as in you'd have exposure either from $59 or $59.75. So you're just away from, you know, we've gotten such a move in oil. Uh, pretty remarkable, even $57.50 early yesterday. And it's a big move, yeah. Sitting at $59.50, and we'll get those inventories. We'll see that reaction in the market when Baz and I come back in three minutes, folks. Folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights Day, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now is a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. I'm Tommy O'Brien, joined by Basil Chapman this morning. We got markets higher across the board. S&B had peaked its head above 3,000, back under that level brief briefly. Jumping back to oil, and we'll get the numbers as they come in, Basil. I'm still trying to pull them up, but nonetheless, you're getting an acceleration to higher prices in crude as we're now at 59.77. Guessing we might have missed that a little bit to the downside in terms of the available supply in crude for inventories, and the market spiking a bit on those numbers as I look for them. And maybe we'll get them. Maybe they got them in the den. Um, but either I'd way, I'd be interested because we've yeah, got a peak we'll C at 60.28. I was wondering if it'd go to 60.29 to make the D and then maybe pull back. Yeah, hey, it could do it, man. I mean, this is um, and you had API. I'm not even sure we can pull those up as well. But it's been it's been nothing but upward action to the tune of almost two dollars uh, fifty eight up to we just and it's pulling back a bit. But you got crude, 59.77 was the high. We're back right at 59.57. Okay. So what else, Basil? I know. How about we take a look at Tesla real quick, if we could, because uh, Tesla, as Kevin said, those FANG stocks, Tesla sometimes uh, a fan favorite, up 2%. And I found it pretty amusing that you are up 2% on basically an internal memo that just said, we're going to build more cars and we're not going to tell you what, how or why or, or what we're going to, uh, what we're, how we're going to do that in terms of details, which is really what they need to do. But what are you seeing in Tesla in terms of the Chapman wave? So there are a couple of things going on with Tesla. It made a monthly high of 289 uh, back in there was that was quite a August. monthly chart over there. Yeah, in the September of 2017, pulled back very sharply to two 240s. Yeah. Then it ran up to uh, 387 point uh, 380. Is that right? 387. That must have been wrong, surely. 389. I knew there was something wrong with that figure. Okay. That was a peak D all-time high way back in 2017. Yes. And then, and then the most recent low was at 176.99 on June the 3rd. So we've gotten that peak D that we always look for in the Chapman Wave methodology in the daily, and it's it's pulled back a little bit. Held the 50, the 9, and the 14 period moving average all clustering together, which should be good support. So it's got to bounce. I tell you something, when I read that the uh, CEO of a company is pushing like crazy to get product out of the door, my first impression is, so what happens to the quality? So I, I don't know. I, I can't really answer that other than I do know a couple of people with, with Teslas, and they absolutely love them. Their biggest thing is that if there's a problem, they have to wait weeks. A friend of mine, had got, yes. uh, got someone bumped him. Yet it's three weeks and he's waiting for absurd. his car to be absurd, repaired. Yeah. So, but, you know, they love the car. And, you, you know, if you love something, you're prepared to put up with these little idiosyncrasies. But if I look at this chart, and I've been saying this for so long, we didn't, I mean, I know Dave White had a fantastic position shorting it, but I, I just didn't have the courage. But my eye said I would, I would not be surprised if uh, Tesla is really – going down to the one, 160, 150 area. When it got down to the 176 area and it's had a bit of a bounce, I, this is a real problem because there's now a lot of competition. Yes. But I do see people buying. I mean, around here, I, every day I just have for fun. I say, oh, I'm just going a couple of miles. How many Teslas will I see? And there's at least three to five that I see every day. Yeah, no, they're and active. Just, you know, but I so agree that, with everything you're saying in terms of – and. and for a long time, they were a company that just had a story, and I say that in a good way, as in it wasn't quite time to put up yet, but now's the time to put up in terms of real details, real numbers, real deliveries, and just for an internal memo that says, get ready to build more cars, we can't go into details on how yet, but we're going to do it in light of who is saying it too in terms of elon and his history with oh he's always a cheerleader and good for him, you know he's yeah, a, I mean that's, that's yeah, his right, job right um but I think the market probably should learn to be a little skeptical when the when the cheerleading has so few details that come with it. If you look it. at the price, Tommy, and you've gone from the three Oof, right? uh, the three eighties down to the one seventies, you have to say there is something going on that is not quite right. And he's just he's been a genius. He produced. Yeah, just think of that. You've got nothing. All of a sudden, you have to build, get the money to build the most incredibly big plants. I mean, if you've ever been, I remember back here in Framingham, we used to have the General Motors uh, uh, plant. And I remember taking both my kids at different times through it. And it was so exciting. You see nothing in the beginning. And then right at the end, you see the car. Sure. Um, it's the, the equipment, the amount of money to the machinery to get it right. And he, and he pretty much did it.
So yeah. congratulations. I mean, there. But comfort- now I think most people are looking at, most financiers are now looking and saying, what's the business plan? I think oh, that's yeah. going to be and the big issue. They have a lot of debt and they have a lot of competitors coming down the line and they've lost their tax credit in terms of, you know, users. That's right. Um, or it's cons- less than it used yeah, to be. Yeah, consumers. It got cut in half and I think it got cut in half maybe again. It's just going to keep getting whittled away as they sell more cars. As uh, the competition comes on. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, and there's yes. still, I was just going to say, there's still a $16 billion company, though, to keep in mind as in massive, massive value there. So they would have area to slide to the negative side still because they are not pulling in the types of profits that you would want for a $16 billion company, you know, in terms of that needs to turn around at some point. So hopefully they, they get it in order and hopefully for everyone that works there and so forth because they are. I like Elon. You know, I like, I like they, they have beautiful cars. I check them out, but I decided to go for something else kind of for, well, for a couple of reasons. Number one, the add-ons made it a lot more expensive than you yes, would think. You, I would have gone for that, that $35,000, give it to me, right? You know, but no, then it was going to be 47, then it was going to be, well, it's 47, but then you have to, you know, et cetera. Um, so they're dealing with some woes there. Jumping back to petroleum real quick, Basil, the number that came in was a, a draw of 9.5 million barrels, and the estimate was only for a draw of about 3 million barrels. I chuckle a little bit because oil, shaking that off and actually now lower. Now, there's a lot that goes into those numbers in terms of demand, refineries, utilization. But nonetheless, we saw a draw of 9.5 million barrels for the week. The forecast was only draw three, and you're sitting right now at 59.38. So we're actually under the price with almost a 10 so million barrel at, draw. So looking at chart formations, remember we spoke about this rectangle formation. You can stay in a rectangle formation a lot longer than your patients. Look at the gold. Gold is in the rectangle formation. Look at the TLT. Let me get to that right now. There it is. There's this very long rectangle. It popped out a few times the back end. So that's the reason why I was saying to you, I think that this is a kind of a choppy period. It's kind of a just a breather after a fantastic move. And I that's the way I'm looking at it. So I, I wouldn't get too carried away about looking for a major sell-off, but I do think we're going to be choppy for a little while. Yeah, and especially if um, for a major sell-off, uh, especially across equities. I don't think you're going to see that while you continue to see Chairman Powell be very open to being appropriate, as he would call it, um, you know, as he makes he, his remarks. He's the gasoline for this particular hour. Maybe he needs uh, electricity power. I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. He might have a chance at some electricity. As uh, You know, it's always interesting when you can't imagine every question that he's going to get, especially at a time where... Um, politics have come into him and even just even not even talking about the politics but just in terms of the questions that he could get really trying to push him to why is he going to raise why is he not going to raise and what comes into that decision um, should be interesting and that's today and, of, and, and it's most tomorrow of it he's got, and most of it he's going to have to say we need to wait for the day to come to yeah come in. yeah okay. i imagine so and he's going to kind of reiterate what he said in his remarks already this morning but he's uh, in front of the house today and i believe he's in front of the senate tomorrow and we get fomc minutes at two o'clock today as well which i didn't realize so that'll add to everything we have going on in the fed folks baz and i'll be right back three minutes we got markets in positive territory on a so what fed day today if you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. 
Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. I'm Tommy O'Brien, joined by Basil Chapman this morning. We got markets up in positive territory. Dow Jones up 118 right now. S&P is positive by 13. NASDAQ positive by 51. Basil just amusingly were saying maybe, you know, politics and, and Powell in front of Congress. He's going to get some questions. And I see the headline coming across CNBC. Fed Chief Powell says he would not resign if asked by President Trump. So they're going to hit him with a bunch of good questions. And I'm sure he saw that one coming. That's an easy one in terms of getting prepared. Um, but speaking of getting prepared, talking about currencies, markets, let's go over to our man Teddy Kegs at from forex-trading-unlock.com. We talked to Teddy about currencies, what's going on in the market every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. Teddy Kegsack, good morning. Morning, Tommy. Good to see you, guys. Good to see you as well, man. So, what uh, we got a lot going on this week with the dollar pulling back a week, uh, a bit right now, of course, with Chairman Powell, like we were just talking about um, in front of Congress today and tomorrow. What are you looking at in terms of the currencies as we have kind of two days of Fed action? We got FOMC minutes today as well. And then we also have a, a bond auction going on today from the government as well. Lots going on out there. There is, there is. We have uh, the numbers this week, today, tomorrow, and Friday are. Uh, not too uh, too much of a concern, but we do have the CPI and the PPI coming out Thursday and Friday. Definitely. So I, I think that unless there's any really big skew away from expectations, those probably aren't going to cause much of a jump in the market, you know, for the currencies or interest rates. Sure. So, um, but I think the Fed uh, minutes today is something to watch out for. So um, we know that the, the dovish stance of the Fed is in place. Uh, as far as Powell um, testifying also in front of Congress, uh, I think you're going to start to have some questions about uh, a potential currency war. Uh, there's been rumblings by Trump to, uh, you know, push the Fed a little bit and say, hey, we need to devalue the dollar like the other currencies have been by other countries in some fashion. So uh, that has come to the light over the past few days with him pushing it. So I think that you're probably going to see some questions um, to Powell being put, you know, as to whether or not he's for that, against that. You know, um, I don't think that the short term sell off right now in the dollar is because of any of those rumblings. I think it's more of kind of just a corrective nature. And, uh, you know, pretty much, I mean, if you look at, for instance, the, uh, the U.S. dollar yen or uh, the U.S. dollar Swiss, they've been trending for a while. So it's kind of time for them to have a little bit of a short term correction dollar weakness. Yeah, I was taking a look at the Swiss. We talk about that. I know you like to follow that. Can you walk us through that parity again for those that don't listen and what you look for? Because we have the Swiss. What's that right now? Just under parity, like 9, 989. I have it up here. 
Um, yes, and actually, it's that's interesting level to talk about, especially right now, because about a month ago, uh, the market had uh, been it rallied up to parity, it had fallen below it, and it looked like it wanted to actually hold, and especially with the news that was in place at the time, it looked like there was a dollar rally going on. And even though it was going against the other currencies, the Swiss, it failed. Uh, now we've made established a uh, newer lower low on the daily chart. And as of the past week and a half, there's been a really nice rally up to about this 98 half to 99 cent level. Uh, this is where I think we're running out of gas. Parity would be, um, and this is where we're, the, the currency war rumblings and what the Fed will do is going to be very interesting over the next couple of days, Tommy. I think that if the dollar strength really prevails and is present in the market, the bulls are going to take out these the recent highs, they're going to reverse gears, and they're going to make a play for parity which is a psychological level for um, the market for a lot of traders. But it's also a balancing point because the Swiss is one of your most secure, safest currencies out there. It's always when the dollar's not flight to quality, the Swiss is, you know, when there's geopolitical sure. action going on. You know, now the Iranian thing has been kind of quiet for the past couple of weeks. Um, obviously, that could flare up. I think that short term, we have a couple, especially today, today's signals are going to be in place for the euro, the pound, and for the yen. Uh, if you look at the, uh, like we just mentioned, the Swiss, we have a uh, short term sell signal. If they settle about where they're at or lower today, I think you're going to see the market break for the next couple sessions in the next week, which would mean it's the, the dollar has been riding its highs. It's time for a little bit of a correction, profit taking move. Um, which would coincide with the news. I don't know if it's a direct correlation, but I think it's the perfect storm to have a little bit of a correction. And the same would occur with the euro US dollar. If you look at the trade today, it's like a balloon underwater. Like it started out today just slightly positive, and now it's encompassed the body of yesterday's trading, the body of uh, uh, Monday's trading, and it's also, also creeping up into Friday's body, which it really had sold off pretty yeah. sharply. So, so that being said, I think that. Uh, are the, were those moves overdone and exacerbated? Perhaps. Um, are these just corrective, you know, moves for the short term? Perhaps. Uh, but I think that the signals, though, that will be set today, like for instance, if the euro U.S. dollar settles about where it's at right now, that's a bullish engulfing pattern, probably setting a trend for the next couple days, couple sessions at least. Um, the same with the Swiss, and then we also have the U.S. dollar yen, which is also. Uh, um, possibly setting up for a nice little slide as well. And that could make sense just uh, fundamentally in terms of if that trend begins on Powell's remarks and he carries that message through today and tomorrow and the market just is kind of digesting that same type of action, then it could hold true that, you know, that he's because he's going to be ever present today and tomorrow, I assume, in the in the. Um, headlines with right. prepared right. remarks and then question and answer that uh, will make headlines, I'm sure, as you know, I'm seeing them pop across my screen right now. Right. And I think that unless he says something that's actually where he's like going against it, where he's for dollar strength, like outwardly saying, I'm protectionist the dollar, I want to maintain dollar strength, that would be the only thing that I would see would reverse gears off of these potential sell signals and buy signals today. You know, um, and I don't think he's going to come out and say that. I think that if anything, he'll say we still need things need to remain to be seen. What's going to happen? But we're going to maintain a dovish stance and not necessarily protective of the dollar, but probably not looking to devalue like you know the president has been kind of hammering for the past couple of days. You know. Yeah. So. And that's also for our economy, too. Think about if we do have a short-term currency war, not a long-term one, but just a couple things to get things moving and get the dollar weakening. Short-term, our exports obviously do better, yeah. our, our services. So that's good for our economy in the short run. Um, I don't think it's preemptive. I think it's more of a, if you can't come to terms with the tariffs, you know, it's a way of saying, hey, um, if you can't make a decision and come to the table with us somewhere and find some middle ground, we're going to do this and force your hand another way. Yeah. No, it's, it's right in the mix for sure. So, uh, and how about the pound, if we could jump over? Because I got a chart up oh, there, the pound. Man, talk about some volatility. That's, that's the one that's really tough, Tommy, because, I mean, <laughs> talk, talk about trying to not catch a falling knife, right? Yeah. I mean, Here. this is just, uh, I mean, since March and April, man, 133 to now 125, and even just since um, over the last month, right? Even since June 24th. But the Brits we, do have their own problems. So oh, that's they do, the they do. For sure. 
Yes. They do, for sure. They're trying now, dollar strength, if, for instance, let's just say that dollar weakness, rather, comes into the market. I don't know if that's going to change things for the pound. You may see a, like, let's say, for instance, that there is a dollar weakness that happens and we see a big rally in the euro, gets it back up to 114, 115. Yeah. Let's say we see, um, you know, the, the U.S. dollar yen and the, and the Swiss coincide with it. I don't know if the pound would yeah. be the same. The pound would be the same. That depends what's happening and, and if Boris is prime minister yet and everything going on, yes. right? Teddy, I wish we had more time. Thanks so much, man. We look forward to next week. Folks, forex-trading-unlocked.com. Check I'm it out. We'll be right you back. You are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been been tracking my newsletter signals to have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South Africa, African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let Gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien, Basil Chapman. I'm seeing more headlines coming across the monitor, Basil. Powell says the strong jobs report last Friday did not change the Fed's outlook. So that kind of fits with what we talked about, where he said things have been okay for the first half of 2019, but I'm worried about where we're going is kind of really what he's been focusing on. And there's another aspect to this that oh, I always find absolutely fascinating. Sometimes... Do you, I don't know if you remember, maybe it was b before uh, something, where it was, no, you probably do, and I'm just trying to think exactly which administration it was. Sure. But they kept talking about a higher dollar, a higher dollar, and a higher dollar, and it kept going lower and yes, lower and lower. Yes, yes. So this is the same sort of thing, that um, the Fed could say whatever they want, 
But just on a shorter term basis, when I did all my work and I sent it over to my subscribers over the weekend, I said, you know what? The short term yields look like they want to bounce a little bit. They don't have to go very far, but it bounced nevertheless. And as I say, if you look at the US, uh, uh, this is the 30 year Treasury bond uh, continuous contract pull back from a peak D. Doesn't have to pull back much, but sometimes what's being said is not quite what's happening. But I do think that yields, the Japanization of our yields, we spoke about it yesterday, sure. there's such competition for yeah, lower yields. Right. They, they really, what can they do? This is this is almost beyond them at this particular point. Yeah, I one think of them, the, the Swiss. I mean, what is the Swiss at right now? I think it might even be negative or right near Point it. six something. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, put Just, something. It's and, amazing. You know, you're talking yeah. about a powerhouse comp um, country that you know you want to talk about competition. If they're if they're only at point six, how are we at two, right, or et cetera, as the as that goes. Right. Well, folks, it should be an interesting day. We get those minutes at two o'clock. We have Powell in front of Congress right now. Basil, thanks so much for filling in for Tom. We look forward to the show at noon, of course. And, of course, I'll be doing Tom show at four. Looking That's forward to That's awesome. That. We get triple yeah. dose of basil, folks. And check out the opening <laughs> call. You. Great service right on the front page of TFNN. You get archived webinars. Basil has done as well. Basil, thanks so much. Have a great day. We Thank look you forward very to the much, shows. Tommy. Thank you. Stay tuned, folks.